The Electrical Panel Tester On January 21, 2010, a quality control electrical tester began work on a 480-volt panel in a U.S. manufacturing facility. The job was routine. Verify connections, check readings, and sign off. The cabinet was energized. The plan was to keep hands clear, use the meter, and avoid contact with the live parts. It was late morning when he opened the enclosure and leaned in to take a measurement. Inside the cabinet, conductors and bus bars were exposed. A slip of a probe, a wrist turned the wrong way, or a sleeve brushing a bare lug can make a body part of the circuit. That is what happened. At some point in the test, his body provided a path to ground. The shock was instant and strong. 480 volts is more than enough to stop a heart. Co-workers saw him collapse in front of the open panel. They called emergency services and began first aid. It was too late. The abstract later recorded it simply. Employee was testing a 480-volt electrical panel. He was electrocuted and killed. There was no long list of steps gone wrong, no complex machinery failure. The fatal mistake was working live without absolute control of contact and approach. A meter probe can slip, a gloved hand can touch a live lug, a cuff can snag. In a live panel, there is no margin. The safest step, lock out, tag out, verify zero energy, and only then test, was not done or not enforced. One measurement became a fatal shock. The Morley Galleria Arc Flash On February 3, 2015, Four electrical contractors entered substation 4 at the Morley Galleria Shopping Center in Perth's northeast. They were there to examine high-voltage equipment after recent outages. In the switch room stood oil-filled Long & Crawford fuse switch units tied into an 11 kV ring main. The plan was inspection and maintenance. The space looked like any other private substation. Cabinets, bench, bins, tools, and the constant hum of gear energized nearby. At about 9.35 a.m., something went wrong. An internal fault or a human error during manipulation of the gear allowed a massive arc to form. In a fraction of a second, metal turned to plasma, oil flashed, pressure spiked, and the switchgear let go. The blast tore through the room. Two men, 30-year-old Alan Cummins and 22-year-old Matthew Hutchins, took the force of the failure. Cummins died at the scene. Hutchins suffered burns to most of his body and died at hospital, Two others were badly injured but lived. Investigators later pointed to the notorious history of that model of oil-filled switch, and regulators issued orders. Ensure complete disconnection before opening lids. Review thousands of similar units for defects. A prosecution also recorded hazards in the way the substation was kept, including stored items that could impede escape. But the heart of it was simple. High-voltage switch gear is unforgiving. If isolation is incomplete, if a mechanism is defective, or if an operator is exposed when a fault occurs, the arc and pressure will fill the room before anyone can move. In HV rooms, the dumbest mistake is assuming the cabinet is just a metal box. Inside, it is a contained storm. By the way, if you want to help this channel grow, consider to subscribe and stay connected. Without further ado, let's get into the next case. The Night Shift Light Swap on September 26, 2018, a small subcontract crew worked the night shift in a large U.S. retail store to replace lighting. The plan was to move quickly. Lift, open, replace, close, move on. The circuits were assumed to be simple 120-volt lighting. In reality, some panels fed higher voltage systems. The power was not fully de-energized and verified. One worker, new to the job, on only his third week, climbed a ladder and opened a fixture that was still live. He reached into the housing to free the old gear. His hand found a conductor the hard way. The shock was immediate. He fell. Co-workers called 911 and tried to help him on the floor below. He could not be saved. The state fatality investigation later spelled out the chain. Energized circuit, wrong assumption about voltage, work performed without lockout slash tagout, and without verifying zero energy. And a night schedule that rewarded speed over checks. The mistakes were painfully basic. Never assume the voltage. Never assume a store or plant is wired the same way as the last job. De-energize, lock, tag, test. Keep the meter in your hand and verify every time. The report is a short read. The lesson is long-lived. A ladder, a live ballast, a bare hand in a tight box. That combination kills quickly, at any voltage. 
the hospital hallway fixture. On June 26, 2016, a general maintenance mechanic at Jersey City Medical Center rolled an A-frame ladder into the labor and delivery corridor to work on a fluorescent fixture overhead. The hallway was quiet. He climbed, opened the lens, and began to handle components inside the light. The power to that circuit was not fully isolated. As he worked, his hand or tool contacted an energized part. The shock hit him. He lost balance and fell from the ladder to the floor, striking his head. Staff rushed to him, called a code, and moved him to intensive care. He died later from his injuries. An OSHA litigation record would later describe the sequence, working on the light, an electric shock, a fall, and a fatal outcome. It read like thousands of maintenance jobs done every day. Only this one had a hidden hazard that turned the ladder into a fall path and the light into a live source. The simple errors stood out. No verified lockout of the local circuit, exposure to energized conductors in a cramped housing, and working at height where even a small shock can make a fatal fall. In building maintenance, just a quick fix is a dangerous phrase. A live feed in a ceiling can be routed from another panel, an emergency supply, or a mislabeled breaker. If the switch isn't locked and tested dead where hands will go, the body becomes the tester. In a hallway that can end with a fall and a hard floor. The Tesla Gigafactory Panel On August 1, 2024, 46-year-old electrician Victor J. Gomez was working at Tesla's Gigafactory in Austin, Texas. According to a later lawsuit in federal reports, he went to inspect an electrical panel, part of an uninterruptible power supply system that was already energized. In high-volume construction and commissioning, energized inspections are temptations. The schedule is tight, systems feed other systems, and de-energizing can mean downtime. Gomez opened the equipment. The cabinet was live. What happened next took seconds. He contacted energized parts and was electrocuted. Co-workers and emergency medical services responded, but he was pronounced dead. In early 2025, federal regulators announced that they had cited the company for serious violations connected to the death and described multiple failures. Inadequate personal protective equipment, allowing work near unprotected energized circuits, and failing to verify whether equipment was energized or to post proper warnings. News reports named the worker, the date, and the core fact. An inspection was performed on live gear, and it killed him. The mistake behind it is as old as electrical work. Treating an energized cabinet like a neutral object you can simply look into. If it is live, it must be justified, protected, and controlled by strict procedure and PPE, or it must be shut down and proven dead. An open UPS cabinet is not a window. It is a set of exposed sources that will use the first path to ground you give them. 